everybody. Welcome back to the Collector's Vault. My name is Mike. Uh, today we're just going to talk about Firefish again. Uh, I had a video of a few, probably a few weeks or months ago, talking about how Firefish were just not good at the time. But we had some new cards to look forward to, and I will admit that some of these new cards, well, that's not new, but some of these newer cards, you know, might actually give some potential for, to the deck and actually uh, allow it to compete in today's meta, which I definitely think these new cards uh, allow it to do. Now, these cards are all very fair cards. In fact, some of them probably could have been released back when Firefish first came out, and it would have made them obviously better, but nothing like Unstoppable. So today, I kind of want to show you guys uh, some of these combos that the Firefish are able to do. I know some combos were demonstrated by Konami when they were uh, re revealing all the cards, but there's another combo I, I, I've kind of come up with that uh, can just, you know, kind of just show you what they were capable of doing. And, uh, yeah, so let's just go to the table, and I'll show you the combos right now. All right, guys, we're back. So we're going to go over a few of these Firefish combos that I've been trying to work on. Uh, some of these, like the, the uh, two-card combo I'm about to show you, uh, I'm trying to find a way to optimize it. But right now, this two-card combo is actually not, you know, created by me. This is just the combo that they, uh, that they basically showed off. I think it was during, like, national season when the, when the Fist of the Gadget set was going to come out. They had the one guy from Konami. And uh, he, you know, demonstrated like a two and three card combo. So I do have an optimized version of a three card combo that basically utilizes similar cards that he used in his combo, but you definitely can extend much further than what he did. But uh, let's just let's get started by showing you at first the two card combo, and then we'll go into the more elaborate three card combos. All right, so let's get into it. So let's start with a very basic two card combo that we did see at the nationals, uh, like events and side, uh, like side events and side shows. How they were basically introducing us to the Fist of the Gadget set. I think they revealed all the cards and they did show us the you know some some combos. So let's start off with the basic two card combo. I mean, I really don't know. I don't know if I have to show this because again, it is on YouTube and everything. But just for the hell of it, I'm going to show you guys it anyway. So, in case you guys don't know it, so if you happen to open up just these two cards, you can root. Whoop! There is the phone again. If you open up with these two cards, you can actually, uh, you know, extend pretty well. So you start off by normal summoning your Raven, and you link some. Oop! Let's try to make sure I have room for you guys. So zoom here. So you link summon it away. We're gonna go into. Not if I can find him. There he is. Our Al Mirage. Let's just put him up here. Can you guys see that? There we go. So, go to Amraj, and then Raven's Effect will activate, and that will allow you to get a tanky out of your deck and set it. If you want, you can immediately activate it, and then use its effect to add yourself. Oops, where'd he go? I have here somewhere. Ah, here we are. Sorry, I had two piles of cards for some reason. Add yourself a dragon. And then this will have Panda immediately activate, so he will summon himself and bring back your Raven. Now, at this point, if you want, you can get rid of, you can just tribute this guy and, to make your uh, extra monster zone free. But for now, I think I'm just gonna keep him here because he does, it is kind of cool just having him here so that way he can offer uh, protection when, when you pass back to your opponent. So we're gonna link someone with these guys and go into our first version of Eagle. Now, the reason why you might want to get rid of the uh, Amaraj is because he only has one arrow. So, technically, by doing this, you're kind of locked to not really summoning more extra deck monsters. And that's why there are better ways to be other extenders. But with just these two cards, this is kind of what you can do. So, basically, you do this, and once again, your Raven will activate, giving you another spell. And at this point, we're going to get our Tensu. So, it gets set. So we're going to activate Tensu and use its effect to double summon our dragon. And now, uh, kind of like when they showed in the, uh, in uh, that Konami showed in their demo video, is that you can actually use Eagle's effect to bounce back either one of these and send a card to the graveyard. Ideally, you can bounce back Tanky, so that way it can be reused next turn. But uh, in their in Konami's video, they did show themselves bouncing back Tensu because this is one of the very few fire facing cards that can actually be, you know, played multiple times in the same turn. So just for that sake, we'll uh, use Eagle's Effect to bounce back the Tenzu. And there is a benefit for this. Then use the effect to then send Rooster to the graveyard. Now, because Tenzu can be activated multiple times in the same turn, you will activate it, and that will trigger Dragon's Effect to set a trap from, to our, <coughs> from, from our deck to the field. We'll get... Ultimate Fire Permission Sinto. Let's set that. 
And now we can use Dragon's Effect to reborn the rooster. Uh, doing that will trigger Rooster's Effect to add a monster to our hand. We're actually going to add Firefist Elin to our hand, the ritual monster. Also, I'm sorry, bear in mind, because I'm, I'm sure you guys all know, as long as you have Eagle, you don't, you don't have to pay the cost for your Firefist monsters. So, that means Dragon ordinarily would send these guys, but since Eagle's in the field, it's for free. And speaking of getting effect for free, we, we're, we're going to use Rooster's Effect to set a Spar Trap from our deck for free. So we're then going to get Dome, which is the ritual spell for Firefist. We can then activate Dome and tribute monsters. So we'll just have to tribute these guys. And we'll get Elin to our field. And this is what two cards can get you in the Firefist combo. Basically, you technically these cards don't really count as cards because you know they're just continuous spell cards, but they do technically do count as cards and they can be recycled with the other Firefist effects. And uh, they technically are used as fuel for cards like Eagleland, even though it is for it, you can use her effect for free because of Eagle. But uh, you do have a spell and trap negate, a counter trap spell and trap negate. You have a monster negate with Eagleland. You do have protection with Amirage. And uh, also, if Dome does go to the graveyard, it is a monster reborn for Firefist. So if you want, if this ever gets MST for some reason, or if you use it, if you, if you send it to the graveyard with the effect of Eagleland, for example, you can then reborn. Uh, basically, you can reborn your rooster. You can reborn your. I guess ideally, probably be best to reborn something like Panda because Panda will then protect all of your monsters. Actually, in my other combo, I want to show you that he's actually one of the most important cards to keep on the field, and, or if you can ever resummon him back to the field because he does offer uh, a reborn ability, but he also protects all of your five responses from card effects. So. Anyway, this is a really good solid two card combo. Again, not a combo I made up. This is was, this is what was demonstrated by Konami. So uh, now let's get on to our next uh, three card combo video. <laughs> Okay, so Konami did demonstrate a three card combo that basically utilizes you opening up with either one of these monsters and the tanky. Basically, you know, you, you open up with one of these guys, use tanky, get the other piece. And they did open up with a pretty good combo, although their combo was very like uh, like turn two basic. It was basically as if I think they focused on going second and attacking for game potentially, making a real massive aggressive board, which is not a bad thing. But the boards we're showing today are going to be all about going first, and so that way you can set up like a pretty like strong board turn one. And uh, surprisingly, Firefish can do a lot with only a few cards, as we saw, which is a two card combo. I'm now going to demonstrate a three card combo. That I personally like if uh, you you can technically do the exact same combo if you open up these three cards or you can open up a Tensu. Ideally, it's better to open up a Tensu because if you open up a Tensu, you could you basically will f it basically causes you to have this back in your hand for next turn, which is nice. If you <clears throat> if you open up with these three, you can still do the exact same combo, but then the tanky basically gets shuffled back into your deck because of a uh, elephant's effect, and so you won't. Uh, you won't have it added back to your hand as easily, but you can always just reset it with, with all of your other effects. But just to show you guys the best possible combo, or I guess the more ideal combo for three cards, let's say you open up with any combination of these three. And again, uh, technically you could always like say you open up with these guys and maybe this card to search the other missing piece. So it's just like, ideally, if you can up with these three cards, there is a really, really crazy turn one combo you can get where you have a very large hand, you have a very aggressive board, and it's basically a very strong board that can, if you, if you open up with a few hand traps and maybe, maybe potentially like some strike, if you ever main some strikes, you have a very, very strong turn one board. So let's just start with this one. So if you start with all these, we're going to start with this by playing your Tensu. And we're going to immediately use the Tensu double summon effect to get out your elephant. And again, assuming you guys all know what these cards do, elephant lets you send this to the grave to summon out your raven. Raven's such, such a great card in this deck because, you know, you're always link summoning with this guy and he just keeps giving you free spells. So then we are go, oop, get ahead of myself. Use Elephant's Effect to shuffle this back into the deck. And we're gonna be adding our Panda. Uh, then we're gonna Link Summon into our Eagle. You can guys see that? Uh, and then uh, your Raven's Effect will then activate. And this will give us our Tanky. I don't know why I couldn't think of that. So we are going to then activate Tanky and uh, use its effect to add ourselves a Firefish Dragon again. And immediately after activating this, Panda will activate, summoning himself, and he will then also summon an Elephant out to the field. So we just come over here. And now we're going to use uh, Eagle's effect to return the Tegi to our hand. 
So uh, I'm not gonna be able to show the, the cards I have in my hand. Actually, you know what? I can probably put them over here. So these would be the cards I have in my hand. So with Tiki being bounced back to our hand, Eagle will then be able to send a Fire Fist Bear to the graveyard. Hope you guys can see the graveyard, it's a little, it's, uh, so since we used, used our Tensu Summon uh, on our very first play, we can then summon Dragon normally. So normal summon Dragon, and then we're gonna use Dragon's effect to resummon Bear. Uh, at this point, we are then going to play these whoop, into our Tiger King. And Tiger King is now going to uh, re is actually going to set. Whoops, where to go? Is now going to set our Fire Fortress atop Leon Peak. This card's going to be getting a lot of counters, so I'm actually going to get my dice ready. Uh, I'm, I'm going to try to make a step where you guys can see it. So we're going to use Bear's Effect to destroy our Tower King. And then Tower King's Effect will then summon out two dragons. It's best to, and actually, uh, the, the placement of these cards is, is actually kind of important. So put them here. And then because these two are summoned at the same time, we'll get one counter. And, uh, whoops, let me try the camera with a little bit. So then we're going to use Dragon's Effect to bring out Raven, and that goes two counters. We are then going to link some with the bear and the Raven, to then go into Peacock. This will then give us another counter, and it'll also give us another spell. And uh, we are going to then get out Yogo. Oops, sorry, let me a little bit better for you guys to see. Okay, so we have uh, Yoko. And I know this might be an odd choice, but we're only getting this because it is a card that we can activate immediately, and it doesn't really, like, like you know, it's it's kind of like Tenshu. We can use this as many times as we want. We don't have to use its effect to actually destroy a card in the field. So we're just going to set this and then reactivate it. And then uh, this is actually going to trigger both Dragon's effects. So if you want, you can get either two of the Sintos, or if you want, you can only just get, like, another ten. You can get, like, a Sinto and a Tencent. So I think this is probably like a better uh, duo to get to get some variety. So you have these two right here. And then we're going to use this dragon to resummon our bear. Goes the four counters on our field spell. And then we can then overlay these two dragons for a second copy of Tyro King. Goes to five counters. And now with his summon, we're actually going to set Dome, the ritual spell. <clears throat> And then uh, because this is a brand new bear, we can use bear's effect to destroy Tiger again. And then this time we're going to summon out two roosters. When you do that, you get six counters. And then you can only use one of their effects to add a monster to our hand. So we'll use that effect to add Firefish Eel into our hand. So put this over here. And again, as you guys can see, we're actually going pretty crazy right now. And this is this is a three card combo, so it's a little harder to do, but still, this is actually kind of, this is really explosive. And uh, so now we're six counters. If you want, you can immediately remove the six counters to make it a little easier on ourselves. And I will say a really good card to add for next turn would be something like uh, Spirit. So let's just add, some, add what Spirit to our hand. Technically, this could be, you know, any Beast Warrior monster you want, but I think Spirit is a great follow up for next turn if the, wish, the worst should ever happen. Okay. We're actually going to use Dome's effect right now. So Dome is then going to tribute these two for our Eland. Right here. That'll give us back to one counter. Granted, we won't be able to use this effect again, but it just adds more counters for the next turn. And then we are going to... Oh, actually, got ahead of myself. Uh, we're actually going to use one, both of their effects to like you know give us some new spells and traps. But we do want to actually use this one effect to swap out Dome, and you'll see why. So we're going to use the Rooster's Effect to not do it for free, but we're actually going to send Domain to the Graveyard, and we are going to actually set an, an InGen. This is the Fusion spell for Fire Fist. Right here. And now Dome and InGen both have effects from this into the Graveyard. This one is actually a Monster Reborn. And so we are going to use this one's effect to get back a Dragon. This gives us back two counters. And now we are going to turn these guys into a Lion Emperor. This will put us back to three counters. And then you can use Lion Emperor's effect to detach and add back any fire monster you want. 
Um, ideally, I would probably add something back like Dragon, just that way he's a because he's just he's a really good card to to get out next turn. Uh, let's see, Elvin's not a bad choice. So basically, you can add like any one of these guys. You can even add back Rooster. I think Rooster's is is not bad in your hand, but uh, let's see. Uh, actually, Panda would also be a really good choice, but we actually want to keep him in the graveyard, and I'll show you why. So we'll just say for the argument's sake, we're gonna add Dragon back because Dragon is just that good. So this is our hand over here. And uh, let's see. Um, okay, now we now have a dragon's effect. So in some combos I've seen, people want with a reborn the rooster. That way they can actually uh, use InGen to get out the fusion monster. And although he is, as much as I love this guy, the fact is that his effect for destroying cards is only really important, or it only works on during the battle phase. You want cards that can actually interact before your opponent even can even get to the battle phase. So if you guys want, yes, you can use Dragon's Effect to get like a Rooster. Use this to summon these guys out, and then use Rooster to swap this out, so that way you can get like another Counter Trap, and then use this effect to add a card back to your hand. Efficiently giving you four cards in addition to the other two cards you have in your hand. But I personally don't think it's all that needed. Now, if you want, you can use that card and just keep it here for next turn. All right, you, you could choose to not use the card, just keep it here for next turn, or you can actually activate that card and get out the swan but prefer preferably what i think is that you can use dragon's effect to actually get out panda and i don't really see people doing this this would give us four counters now yes panda is panda will get to be able to do his reborn effect again plus our field's full but panda people i think people forget panda protects all of your fibers cards from being destroyed by card effects by sending these to the grave instead so you're basically pretty protect, pretty protected with this guy. Now, if you wanted to, you could then, like I said, use Engine and maybe fuse these guys away into the Swan, giving you another counter. And then, but the, the problem is that as long as you have Dragon in the field, Dragon can actually give you more traps. So I would advise this could be your best. This is a really good turn one combo, which just using three cards. You have these three cards in your hand, not including the two cards you have when you started. You have a battle trap, which you know boosts all your cards by three hundred. All they're all boosted by three hundred, and this can make one guy gain a thousand basically. Spell and trap negation, and you have this for next turn, which also if if this does die, basically if your opponent does choose to MST it or twin twister it, it gives you a card back. Uh, also, if you use any of these traps, including Sinto, Dragon can then set you another Sinto or another ten cent. But ideally, I would just search for an, another Sinto for your next turn. Because, you know, searching two in one turn is okay, but you can't you can't use two in the same turn. So I will just use this one. It goes to the grave. Dragon they can set you another one from the deck. Also, I like having Yoko out because PS, some combos I've seen can do some similar to this and they'll have a little search on the, another 10 cent. But now that you have Yoko in the field, although this card doesn't do anything, it is technically out of the deck and is now accessible. You can bounce it back with Eagle, so that way you now have a free pop in your hand. And uh, it's also just an, another name. But uh, yeah, guys, so I truly think this is probably one of the best combos you can do with Firefist. Again, because as powerful as Panda is, you're locked into doing uh, Firefist plays or only summoning Firefist monsters. Oop, camera shaking. But uh, I'm trying to think that there is a way you can or uh, basically summon out something like Apollosa first and then without using Panda's effects. So that way you can then, you know, continue with your plays with Panda and make a really good board, mainly utilizing cards like Sinto and Eland. But, how, but I already have enough Apollos in the field as well. So that way you can basically continue your, uh, or just, just, all, just offer more protection. The problem is that um, it's, these kind of combos are really vulnerable to hand traps. I mean, Nibiru is a big problem, uh, like, like, like for many combo decks. But it's kind of hard trying to get Eland down before your fifth summon. Technically, you could do that, but then it really, uh, some, I don't know. Maybe I'll try to incorporate a way to get this card out really, really quickly while you're still comboing off. Because once you get this guy out, you are pretty safe from uh, Nibiru. But again, then all it takes is like a Nibiru and then like an infinite permanence and you're kind of screwed. But all combo decks are really suffering from that right now. But anyway, hope you guys like the combo. If you guys have any comments, please let me know down below if you think I screwed up somehow. Or if you have any way you want to improve this combo, yeah, please let me know. So that way we can all, we can all uh, help each other. And I think, it's, I think that's it for now, guys. So take it easy.